Welcome back. In the previous few episodes, we looked at unrolling a recursive ray reflection system, but that was just for reflections. And additionally, we looked at a recursive ray refraction system, but that was just for refractions. If a recursive system is continuing the original ray, then it's no problem to unroll it into an iterative system. However, when the ray starts spawning multiple child rays, that becomes a geometric problem. That is, the problem complexity is multiplying at every stage. In the case of a recursive and refractive ray, it would be doubling the problem size at every stage, and that's tricky, but it's not unmanageable. In this video, I'm going to bring it all together. And to start with, I have my, my little diagram here. So let's say that we have da, 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 rays. We can spawn a bunch of rays and we can have one ray that we're working with right now. And additionally to that, we can have a stack of rays which will be processed in the future. And to keep track of which ray is about to be processed, we have a stack position. So here's typically how we would start this. Let's say we have our first ray is here. We're about to work with it and the stack is completely empty. No history. Now we shoot this ray. I'm going to call this ray A just for labeling purposes. So here's A. A does its thing. Now if A misses, we look at the stack and we say, is our stack position at zero? Yes, it is. Well, that means we've got nothing in our history. So that was the only ray it missed. Let it just hit the sky. That's it. We're done. But if that ray succeeds, then of course that ray refracts, I guess. So we've got A there still. But in addition, it spawns a reflection ray, which I'll call B. So in our code, we create a new ray and say, okay, this is ray B. Now ray A has gone through one trace. So we'll have like a ray depth variable here. We'll just set that to one, say, hey, you've done one trace. And then on ray B, we'll say, hey, by the way, you count as having done one trace. This is just so that the depth doesn't become unmanageable. And we'll stick that in at the stack position, and then we'll increment the stack position by one. So prior, the stack position was zero. Now the stack position is one. And we can interpret this as we've got one ray in our backup history waiting to be traced. Okay, but our ray that we're looking at is still A. So we still trace A along and A does its thing. Maybe it misses. And if ray A were to miss, then we'd say, okay, we've got something in our history. So we'll decrement our stack position and then we'll take that ray and now we'll, we'll go and do this all on ray B. By the way, when a ray misses, we immediately add its energy to the pixel. Okay, so let's keep going in the worst case scenario. So ray A has done its thing legitimately. Okay, so we say, alrighty, well, you've done a trace. So you are, you are done, you are donezo. And then we bring in a new ray, ray C. Now I'm gonna go to a maximum depth of two. So I'll put this on there and then this may seem a little, a little silly that I'm putting on a ray, which is terminal, but it is what it is. Okay. So where was I? The stack position was here. We'll increment it by one. Okay. So now, as you can see, we've got two rays in our history. Then at the next step, we look at ray A and we say, are you at your maximum depth? Yes, you are. Okay. So we'll bring the stack back by one. And now we're looking at ray C, this variable gets overwritten. There we go. So ray A has contributed to the pixel. And okay, next step, we look at ray C, we say, hey, are you done? Yes, we are. Okay, excellent. So take that off because we've still got ray B. So ray B comes back and we trace ray B. So ray B does its thing, refracts legitimately and spawns another ray, a reflected ray. So as always, we increment by one and we make our ray D and we stick that on the stack. And there we go. 
So then we look at ray, our current ray we're working with. Are you done? Yes, you are. Okay. Bring the stack position back. Next step, look at this ray. Are you done? Yes, you are. Great. And our stack position is zero, so we are done. The contribution of all the rays has been summed up and added to the pixel. So that is how my recursive system is going to work. Now, you will see that it's really bad for performance, even with a very small number of, of bounces. But having said that, let's jump into the code and take a look at it. All right, so here we are in the code. If I run this, this is the code from a previous video in which we had refractions, but not really reflections. Now, if we look at the frame rate right now, 4,200 frames per second, just, just bear that in mind because there is a performance trade-off with this technique. As you can see here, we have refractions, but we don't really have reflections. See behind me, there's a whole bunch of spheres. They're not being reflected back at me. Okay, so 5,400 frames per second. Let's go ahead and look at modifying this code. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to these ray surface interactions. And instead of these things, returning the color of the pixel, I'm actually just going to make them void and all they're going to do is modify rays. So what happens is when a surface gets hit, we will have the two rays, we'll have our current ray we're working with, we'll have the new ray that we just made, we'll send them both to the scatter function. The scatter function will reflect one of them, refract another one, and all that's doing is modifying the state of the objects. So I'll just pop down and implement those functions. So it's just important to remember that the refraction ray is the, the legitimate ray, which has the correct direction and origin and all of that. However, both rays are going to now be emanating from this same position, which is why I'm setting this at a common point in the function. Now, what I'm doing here is initially the reflection ray will be an exact copy of the refraction ray. It's just that they will undergo different operations. All right, so now I will go ahead and, yeah, refract. So we set the common state and then we go ahead and handle those two rays differently. So let's have a look at reflection. So hopefully you can see this has gotten quite a bit simpler. What's happening is that the this is working out which proportion of energy is imparted to the reflection ray, and then we change the direction. That's it. Now for the refraction part. There we have it. Look at how simple that is. This ray, again, one minus reflectance, the energy to, that doesn't get reflected, gets transmitted in this case. Uh, so we have that multiplier. And then as well, because this ray is traveling through the sphere, it gets colored according to the sphere that it travels through. So look at that. Both these functions are now considerably simpler and they make more physical sense. I'm not a physicist, but I believe this makes more sense. I must have missed this earlier. This miss function, because it's going to be modifying a ray, needs to take a reference to that ray. That needs to be an in-out parameter. So here we've got our ray. We're setting that up. I'm also going to initialize my stack and stack position. Now this statement will just become a while true. So we've got a current ray. Let's go ahead and trace that. Let's deal with the hit case. 
in this case we will construct which we will be populated with the reflection data then we'll go ahead and scatter and I'm going to increment the rays oh I forgot about this up above where I have the ray I'm going to make another variable yeah that just tracks how many bounces this ray has done so we'll increment that ray's depth Okay, and now the reflection ray has been constructed. It is good to go. I'm going to throw it into my history. So throw it in at the current position and then increment that. So in this case, a few things are gonna happen. First up, I'm gonna do one terminal trace and this is just going to test against the sky. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add that raise energy to the current pixel. And then I'm going to look at grabbing another ray. So just as I was going through on paper, if we've got nothing in our history, then yep, we really are done. Break out of that while loop. Otherwise, grab the next one. So decrement the stack position and then fetch that as the next ray to work with. Actually, I just realized something. This may be something I'll need to address in future. I don't know. Um, but I've just realized that if we get a ray and it has a depth of two, we probably should not trace it. And so this is a little bit dodgy, but I'll do it anyway. So let me, let me talk through that again. So da, 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 we look at our current ray. If our current ray has traced enough times, then yep, it's done its service. We contribute it to the pixel, then we grab the next ray. But then if we get to this point, it indicates that we have a valid ray, which has some tracing left to do. So we go ahead and trace it. And then down here, and you know what? Because I'm limiting the number of traces, I'm not doing like a hundred bounces or something. I am going to 100% backflip, get rid of that condition, turn this into an if-else. Okay, so if our ray did not hit something, then contribute it to the pixel and grab the next ray. And there we go, that's life. So let's try that, Aha, totally fine. It's one of those coding while talking things. Okay, um, 260, doesn't like that function. Ah, that should be void. 268, what have we got? Incompatible types. Oh yeah, origin. Okay, so I'll just have to investigate this. Okay, as always, I think it's, I think it's some silly error. When I made this ray, I forgot to initialize its depth at zero. And so what could have been happening is that the rays were taking random numbers for their depths, which is why they were flickering in and out. Let's see how that goes. Okay, that's looking stable. So pay attention to the frame rate. We go up, up, and then we go down. Having said that though, it is more physically accurate than before. We've got the reflections of the spheres behind us. We've got the refractions of the spheres in front of us. You know, this does look like a very cool effect. It looks sort of cringe when you stop and take a screenshot of it, but while you're walking around with this, it does look very cool. So, as to some things which could be causing these errors, as far as I can tell at the moment, it seems to be physical limitations in the, the graphics cards hardware limits in its um, in its cache size, because my theory is that when I perform a ray trace, we're tracing through the cache, basically. We've got some cache which is filled up with the bounding volume hierarchy nodes, and it seems to do a pretty decent job of tracing through that. But then when we come out of that and fetch another ray from memory, that is out of cache in my opinion, and it seems to be just 
just struggling really badly. And my reason for guessing that is that as I increase the depth further, it doesn't seem to penalize it as much as as just having a few bounces. So, I don't know, up for debate. That's my theory. I may have a look at this later. I don't know. But anyway, that'll be it for today. So as always, all the best. Keep coding always. Have a great one. Bye.